We're going to do two things this lesson. I'm going to just introduce you to the Fluent API, and we're going to make our first um, thing in the database, which is going to be a combined key. We're going to explain to the NT framework how it's going to kind of bind the customer with the address using a combined key in our new customer address. Uh, table. So let me show you what I mean here. First of all, the Fluent API is um, kind of a way for us to start with a with a diagram like the one I have. We can actually start map every, mapping everything together. You can change IDs, you can change columns names, you can uh, you can do so many things. You can you can make relations. That's what we're going to use it for as well. You can do everything as you create a table because that's what the NT framework is for. It's for building a table without you writing SQL code yourself. The NC framework will take care of writing the right queries for you. Some of them might be slow and you can start discussing that with the real SQL guys. But in C-Sharp you'll be able to write pure C-Sharp with this Fluent API. You'll be able to write pure C-Sharp with a few commands and then behind the scenes it'll create an entire database system for you using some SQL queries that you do not ever see because they're just executed behind the scenes. So let's figure out how to do this. First of all, you have to understand that we're working inside the context and to do this we need one very simple method and that's on model creation, meaning when I create the system, how should it look? So we're going to implement this and I'm going to show you how to use the override because we're going to override a method inside the DB context. So let's have a look at how we do that in code. Inside the code, I'm going to go to the customer app context in my case and in here, I'm going to override a new fun uh, function that's in the DB context by writing override. When you have written override, you can actually see all the functions that you can override in this class. Let me just try and do that again, because for some reason it didn't want me to, it to stay there. So I can go here and watch what kind of functions I have available. And since I used on model creation last time, it kind of figured out that's probably what I want to override. So I'll click that one, or you can also start writing on model creation, and it'll pop up like this. And there we go. Now we kind of overri we've overridden this function right here. Notice that what it's doing is right now nothing except it's just calling its base on model creation. I don't think that's doing anything right now, so we'll just keep that there. So this is how you kind of prepare yourself for modeling your database. This function right here is where we're going to write all the model language for how our database should look using the Fluent API. And the Fluent API is pretty much just like if we're talking link and lambda, it's just a list of commands that you can execute and put in here to build a database. So let's try and create the primary key for our new table called customer address. So the first thing I'll do is I'll say model builder to get the builder for the model, this guy. I'll do a dot and I'll say entity to explain what entity I want to change or what table I want to work with in the database. In our case, it's going to be called customer address. And notice it's not down here, but I can still work with it, right? Because now I'm actually in the Inside the Fluent API, I'm defining it, so I can still work with it. I'm doing a parenthesis here, and then I'm going to explain what the key is by saying dot he has a key. This is the primary key. For the customer address, CA, customer address, is going to be equal to a new key. And I do that by putting in the curly brackets like here. It's going to be a combined key with the CA dot, which is the customer address's address ID comma, the customer addresses customer ID. So this is how you make a new combined key in the database and this will pretty much end up with these guys having to be unique together. So I cannot create the same address ID with the same customer ID more than once. That's, it's unique. So that makes sense, right? If I had a customer, John, and he lived on Living Street, he couldn't be able to be John again and live on Living Street again. He only needed that one, um, row in there to explain that. So that's how you build a key. Now you know two things. You know there's a Fluent API, you know how to start using it inside your context, and now you've seen a first call here where we st say, we start by looking at the entity called customer address, and we say combine a key into a new combined key where we use the address ID and the customer ID from the customer address to actually build a combined uh, primary key. Next lesson, let's try and start working with relations. See you next time.